A ride, a ride, a ride. There he is, the man, the myth, the legend. That is Marcel Louis Jacques. How you feeling, baby? Great draft day. Uh, this is this has become less and less of a work day for me over the past, we'll call it four years or so. I've been with ESPN. This is my fifth season. I've covered one first round pick. I've covered well, one like first round pick. They, they like keep trading. They don't want me on the. They don't want me on the on the mock draft, man. They don't want me on oh, the show. So you're basically saying we need to kick your ass out of town and get you off this beat so we can have more first round picks. Uh basically, where I go, I am where first round picks go to go to die. Uh, now we know the problem, Dolphin Nation. There we go. It's we need no to move Marcel. We need to move Marcel to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders uh, beat. Hey, but what I will say. The one time I've ever actually predicted a first round pick, like I've ever actually, you know, been asked to opine on it, I, I I nailed it. I said cool. the Bills were taking. No, I said the Bills were taking Greg Rousseau at thirtieth overall, which is hard to do. You know, it's picks one through five, one to, one through ten, a little yeah. easier. Yeah, picking the thirtieth pick. That's tough. That was oh, tough. Yeah, right. So I'm just saying, I might not get y'all a first round pick, but I'm gonna get it right when they have one. You're right. You're right. That's That's the precedent. I did. I nailed the third rounder one year. Yeah, the odds are they're astronomical at that point. Yeah, yeah. That was Uh, uh, math wizards has to actually has to do the math there. Bullshit. It's just luck. (laughs) Yeah, it's just. (laughs) I don't. It's I'll, like I will you, learn. Like going to the gas station and and hitting it and give me a quick pick and you win. That's all it is, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to miss that you're going to miss on that dartboard every single time. Then once in a while you're going to hit it. Go, Whoa, I did it and that's it. You know. Hey, I will learn I will learn more about these guys after they're drafted than I will you know in the pre-draft process. Like other than that, I I I killed myself over you know, learning this guy and this guy and this option and that and this and that. And uh, when I was with the Panthers, and they didn't draft a single one of those guys. Hundreds. Well, let's uh, let's one. talk about smoke screens and BS. I think Dalvin Cook is a complete smoke screen and a BS. Uh, I don't think they have any interest in trading for him. I don't think they have any interest in paying any kind of high money for him. Now, if Dalvin Cook gets cut and he wants to take less money – like three, four million dollars, then I think Chris Greer could think about something like that. But I am trying to tell Dolphin Nation, who I, I think you're learning this now, whenever there's a player available that happens to also be from South Florida, there's this love affair that becomes just intoxicating and just, I don't know, it's, it, it's, like, uh, it's like Pookie. Uh, working the pipe a little too much there in New Jack City. That's kind of what it looks like. You know what I'm saying? And so you you got a taste of it last year. Oh, Teddy Bridgewater's going to take to his job because he's a Miami guy. Oh, Mike White. Oh, he's the greatest thing since sliced bread. He'll be better than Tua. So you'll get that drug. And who is saying that? There with Dalvin. So where where are you with this whole Dalvin crap? I don't know who 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 is saying Mike White over Tua. That's I've gotten it, bro. I've That's got a stretch. Um, I know. I know. Same deal, though. I I, I don't Wait think. A uh, Hold on a second. They said Skyler over to a last year. Not a Miami guy. It doesn't yeah, go with. Yeah. The, but they, <laughs> you and I got that. Okay. So go ahead. There. Uh, it, this is how I see. It. This is how I see it. Trading for Dalvin is a bit of a smoke screen because we will know for a fact that he is on the market if the Vikings take a running back. You know, the, the presumption is they take a running back and that then Miami is supposed to be uh, supposed to aggressively target him. They take a running back. That means they're going to cut him. Right. They're going to cut him. There's no point in trade. Like, you just have to – you know where he wants to go if you're Miami. Like, if you're trading for him, then it's only to beat out the Dolphins because in free agency, I think he wants – he would want Miami. It they makes for a pretty too. crowded running back room, but I think he would, I think he would want Miami. Other but than that, want, it does not make sense money, to trade for him. Marcel, if he wants money in a multi-year deal, is he going to get that here? Because I try to tell Dolphin fans that th- these dudes like low-hanging fruit for their running backs. They they don't pay for running backs. So I'm yeah, not but, sure. If Dalvin wants to play in Miami, that's fine. But he's going to have to play for a lot less. 
like the sick. only the only running back I am trading assets for is Derrick Henry. Like the only, and I don't think he's available. Right. But the only running back I am trading for, I am parting ways with things on my team, players, picks, whatever, is Derrick Henry. Because Derrick Henry is still an elite level talent who I believe has years and years in front of him. He has significant injury history, you know, or has had a significant injury in his history, I should say. But he's still 6'3, 240 pounds and moves like a gazelle. He's fine. <laughs> he's fine. That would be, could you imagine that level of offense? Like, what are you going to do? You're going to stack the box against Derrick Henry? Or, you know, stack the box against Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle? Yeah. Or are you going to go light box against Derrick Henry? Like, that would be, if there's a way to get that done, get it done yesterday. Yeah. The only problem is, I don't think they have the ammunition to do it unless they go into their picks for next year. I don't think what they have this year is enough to trade for Derrick Henry, unfortunately. I don't either. Like, this might be, this is one of those where we get so much downtime. You know, there's so much downtime between between things, between the end of the season and the combine and the draft that, like, your mind starts to motor up a bit and you're like, all right, well, I got to do this and we, we should do that and we should do this. And the best, probably the best course of action, action stay pat. You got four picks. Greer has shown in the past a an unwillingness, a hesitancy to deal future picks. You know, we said like with notably with Tyreek, he didn't want to do, he didn't want to deal future first round picks. And especially having gone two years without one, I don't think it's not like they're going to get rid of another first rounder for Derrick Henry. I think it's overpaying anyway. But that's not like that. It's not like they're going to do that. So I think like the best course of action, you got your four picks. If anything, if you want to move up a little bit or maybe move back a little bit to stockpile this year go ahead but i i don't i just don't foresee any aggressive move for either another player or an aggressive move to get into the back of the first round i, I don't I'm not saying that it won't happen i just don't i don't personally see it happening Here, here's the other thing have you watched greer's run in the second round what the hell's the need to go to the first the guy That's finds what? freaking studs in the second all the time so there's a decent amount of talent, a lot of talent in the second and third round here. Just so happens, you got second, third round pick. It, again, Rob best course Hunt, of action is to let the man do his job. X, Holland. I mean, are you kidding me, dude? Over the last couple of years, you have picked all kinds. And I know the Gesicki thing kind of didn't work out because of the scheme. But to me, that wasn't a bad pick. That's a very good player that if he lands in a system that they throw him the ball. Oh, he's the Gesicki thing, the Gesicki pick worked. It worked. That, it no, worked. that pick, that pick worked. Right, uh, that's what I'm saying. But just, you know, some 50 catches say, a year for three years. Right. No, that was, that, was right. that was a hit. Right. That was a hit. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Rob Hunt is a hit. Uh, Holland is a hit. X is a hit. I mean, come on, dude. If if anything, that's one of his strong suits, actually. He's really good in the second round. So I'm actually looking forward to tomorrow at 51. I, I This whole thing about trading for Jameer Gibbs. Again, this is... Brother, have you watched these guys? They don't do this. They don't trade a bunch of picks. To, and you would have... By the way, it would take your entire draft... And something from next year to move into the first round from 51. Am I wrong here? If, if we go to a, a draft, the draft value chart, then yes. yeah, that's it'll take at least your second and third and maybe a mid round next year for a late first and a late round pick. Either this or year a or running year. back. You, you, for, you see Chris Greer doing that for a running back. It's just and, that's and, not in his character. No, of course not. It's not in his character. Are you, see, are you keeping up with this? Uh, the, these reports are starting to flood in a bit. Jackson, yeah. Yeah. yeah L- Lamar Jackson. Well, Jamison Hemsley first put it out that um, – and you know yes, you know Hemsley. He, he, he does an excellent job covering the Ravens. And he um, he says, hey, I've got I'm, – I'm, I'm going to have good news for Ravens fans. And now Jake Glazer has also now followed up and, and said that they're very – you know, they're, it's very close. So it looks like something's going to gonna happen finally. You know, I'm wondering, I was telling Sean this, I'm wondering if Lamar was like, well, okay, I want a fully guaranteed contract, but if you get me some weapons, some real weapons, then maybe I'll take, you know, this as guaranteed. So I'm wondering, now that they got in the receiver, 
maybe they'll get another one here in the in the draft tonight. Yeah, they're gonna have to get another one. Yeah, maybe <laughs> that's what's maybe that's what's bringing Lamar to the table now. That maybe maybe it wasn't so much about the guaranteed money. Maybe you know, like last year, he wanted to prove to people and he tried to stay in the pocket more. Maybe he wants he's like, hey man, get me the weapons like they got Jalen Hurts. And I'll show you I can do the same thing. And maybe that's yeah, kind of know, what his thing is. Kind of thinking like uh, maybe also the market just wasn't really, really wasn't there. Maybe these teams weren't messing around. They weren't BSing. Why would yeah, you? Why really, would you give a running quarterback a, a guaranteed deal? That's that they don't, I would have. Tra- if if I was the Jets, I would have traded for Lamar Jackson already. I would have oh, traded oh, for Lamar oh, Jackson. A I got month Sean and a half freaking ago. out on me here. Hold on. What do we got? What do we got, Sean? What do you got? What do you got? I'm I'm looking at um, and this is not on the subject you're talking about. Okay. But with the Jets, when they traded for Aaron Rodgers, right? They restructured his deal, so next yes. year they only owe him one million dollars. No. Oh yeah. This year they owe him in, one in, million yes. dollars. In next year they owe him before <laughs> they owe him a hundred and seven point five million dollars. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like obviously they're gonna we're done, you know, right? They're gonna restructure that. Like that's not a yeah, but, it's yeah, not a real. But still, yeah. that's so but, much work to do. Marcel, but let's break it down for people so we, we can tell them what they're going to do now. What's going to happen is that the next year, they will then, if he retire, if he, he's probably going to retire after the second season, unless this season is catastrophic. And then what they'll do is they'll break that down over several years. And then it'll be a hit against the cap for the next. I don't know how many. See, that's the only thing. I'm, that's the only where the only part that I have to I have to call ignorance here. How far out can they put the bonus? Because they, the, you know, they're allowing teams to do that now. So even if he leaves the team next year or in two years, he'll be on the books for several years. How many years after somebody's gone can they break it down into the into the uh, cap? You know, yeah, I don't think it's I don't I don't think that's a it's a Bobby Bonilla type rule. No, not that you can far pay him out. for no, twenty no, years no, out. Yeah. But uh, but I know um, that there's a few years you can do it. Yeah, yeah but I, all I know, all I can say is, without having studied what the Jets' actual cap situation looks like, all I can say for sure is they're not paying one hundred and seventy million dollars to one player next year. They're not. Right, they're I, not paying. I, they'll break it. They'll break it down and and right. and, and push it back. Uh, yeah. Rogers has already said that. Uh, inside this Lamar stuff, I think this is. I think this might come before the draft, man. Uh, here it uh, goes. The Jets can also add a void year to lower the cap charges. That's, that's what we're the, talking about. That's if New York phrase. merely yeah. acquires his option bonus, Rogers' cap hit in twenty four would be seventy one point twenty six, according to ESPN. Uh, so there you go. So yeah, like I told you that they can start to break it down and then, but I don't know how many years after that, and they, they could break it down for a couple of years and lower that number. But yeah, it's uh, listen, they had to do the trade. They had no choice because their window is now with that team. So yeah, I, again, I, I, I personally would have got Lamar. Um, I, I, I think they got hosed a bit on this trade or for, like on this trade when you knew you thought you had all the leverage. It, I mean, trading, he's going to play 65% of the snap. So trading two first round picks for a 39 year old quarterback, I don't care how generational of a talent he was and how good of a quarterback he might still be. That's two first round picks for a guy who's got maybe a year, maybe two better, of high level play win. left. You better win. You, you better freaking win. And the pick swap, I was on board until I saw the pick swap. The pick swap was like the lamest thing I, I, I've. I don't understand. I just don't understand it. That was like uh, <laughs> the Jets. That's like Joe Douglas was like, well, I want to say that you gave us something, too. Well, it's just a, a swap Thank to you. move up. That's all it is. It's no not much of a, you know, it's it's not. All right. Really. All right so that was funny. By the end of the night, is is Dalvin Cook or Jameer Gibbs on the Miami Dolphins? No, okay. uh, no. Too many teams who have actual capital to get Jameer Gibbs are interested in Jameer Gibbs. That dream is done. He's not dropping to 51. End of story. He's not dropping yeah. to 50. He might not be, he might not even be available tomorrow. He, he might go tonight. Uh, and then Dalvin Cook. I'm not ruling Dalvin Cook out as a future If Dolphin. they release him, that's when they have a shot. But if, if they release him, I do yeah. not see, I don't see them trading for him. And that no. trade's definitely not going to happen tonight because, I mean, it's not like the Vikings are about to take a running back in the first round and then get rid of Dalvin. So it's, just but we got a lot Matt, of 
they have Madison. It's not like they're desperate for a running back. They can get a no, running back. No, like it's not in by them drafting running back. They're not saying this guy is our back of the future. They are they are saying is we are investing capital into our new timeshare. They're they're going to have Madison as RB1. It's done. Right. Jackson Lamar's done. Right. All right, so what's your I told gut you that was going to happen tonight, man. Yeah, what's your gut tell you on 51? I wish that we had this show tomorrow. I wish we had the show tomorrow. I'll bring, like, you on tomorrow so, I'll bring you on tomorrow night. So don't worry about it. I got maybe. I, I got a lot to do. I actually have to work tomorrow. But uh it it's so hard to predict this these things without knowing remotely what the board is gonna look like. I know. Like it, I, I have why, no idea. That's why I'm not afraid to say it because I want to yeah. wait for this first round to be done, and then I'll have a better feel the next day. So tomorrow morning when I wake up, I'll know all the players that are gone, and now I can have a better conversation about what's going to happen. And then, exactly. as, and right. then tomorrow we're actually going to do a draft show tomorrow because I'm not doing one tonight to talk for four hours for no freaking reason at all. So uh, uh, tomorrow, as the picks go off the board. Then, th then the puzzle starts to unravel for me, and I can now figure things out. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm looking for. I'm like you, man. I got. We got to see what happens today. How many linemen go? How much does that affect the second round? How many linemen don't go that then get pushed in to the second? How many tight ends, if any, go? And how many will exactly. go in the first round? Will Washington go in the first round? Is he available at the beginning of that second round? You know. You know, all of these things that we just don't know what the hell is going to happen. Hell, Jameer Gibbs, even if you think he's going to go late first, shocker, he's available now early second. It happens, dude. I don't know. You, you, sure, you never know. Like I said, the, the run on tight ends could be over-exaggerated, and, and damn near all of them might be available. All right. the top guys might be available right. midway through the second round. We have no idea. Maybe you – know, I'm not saying they're going to get receivers, but you never know. Like who's who's drafting that? Like somebody, maybe somebody falls in love with Jalen Hyatt. I don't, I don't know. And they want to move up to 51, and they draft. The, like you just, you never know what is going to happen. So it's impossible to come up with scenarios right now because again, I don't, I don't have the math, but there are, I am sure, a billion, literally billion different scenarios of how boards can fall based on who picks what and what goes where and who trade like. Let's just, my advice, do what I do. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy the moment. It's a fun night to predict futures, to learn about new players. To be like, it, it, it's a very, it's an informational, and it's an educational experience. Just enjoy the night. Don't look too far into it. We still got rookie camp. We still got OTAs. We got mini camp. And then we got training camp. And then we got the preseason before we actually start, you know, seeing how things are, are are structuring, seeing how things are materializing. There's so much time left before real football actually matters. Just enjoy everything one step at a time. It's a great night. A lot of guys' lives changing tonight. You love to see it. Uh, let's see. What do we got here? Uh, the Ravens? That's what the, I'm saying. Rappaport oh, said it's done. Rappaport oh, okay. said it's done. Schefter's saying they're still working through language. Okay. But it's, so it's done. Okay. It's basically right. done, and I think it, it beats Hurts. By the way, somebody's asking, uh, is Marcel a wrestling fan? Nah, I played the video games back in the day, but uh, I did not. I am not, no. Okay. Uh, let's see. What else do we have here? If uh, Miami is really all in for the next two years, it makes total sense to bring Dalvin Cook or Derrick Henry in. Well, the Derrick Henry one, he wants a new contract and you got to give up compensation. I don't think the Dolphins can actually afford to do that uh, because they've got a whole bunch of money that they're going to have to spend over the next couple of years. And a Derrick Henry contract would be kind of crippling for them. Remember, Jalen Phillips is coming up. Jalen Waddle is coming up. You've got to pay Wilkins and Sealer. Uh, you've got to pay Javon Holland. There's a lot of freaking money that you've got to pay in the next two years. You just can't give away a Derrick Henry contract. Am I wrong here? And look, and going all in, it's it's it worked for the Rams. It worked for the Rams. How many other teams has that worked for? Has that strategy worked for? Only one. I don't remember. And another. then you are, are, are you mentally like prepared to go all in? It fails. 
and then you are what the Rams are now. Right. A right. shell. I've yeah. talked to Rams reporters who don't know, you know, who, who, who don't know half the guys on that team. Yeah. Like they are scraping the barrel there. It's not going to be pretty for a little bit. Baker Mayfield had to come off the street and play on Thursday night football. And then it was a hell of it was an awesome game. But like that's the that's the kind of desperate you're getting. Just they're all they're cautiously all in. Like uh, you know, their their feet are in the water, their legs are in the water. Not their maybe not they, they they got upper chest and up dry. Everything else is in the water. I wouldn't say that the cannonball is there quite yet. Otherwise, like you said, yeah, they would probably part ways with some hey hey, they to get titles, Derek Henry. Bro. They got their title, so that's a good thing for the Rams. It was it was well worth it. it, it but yeah, for the, the, the Derrick Henry thing is that's a tough situation. I don't even know I don't even know who trades for him uh, at this point. Because uh, you're in a rebuild, you know, and that, that's that's what kind of puts you in a tough situation if uh, if you're Tennessee. Uh, for for that guy. All right, what do you got going on? I'm on curious ESPN? because like I'm, they they really want a quarterback. They are done with. Uh, it's weird, huh, Malik? You know, wow. they're done with. I mean, you, we knew they're done with Malik. You, you could kind of tell like, Malik's not a. There was no flash of brilliance there. There was yeah. you can't even surpass 100 passing yards, man. Yeah, no, he's Skylar Thompson did that off the bat, like did, did that cold in yeah. the seventh round. So yeah. you know, like when you don't have it, you don't have it. So I'm curious, like. Do they part ways with Derrick Henry and a pick in order to get up to number two? In order to get up to number three, Arizona is shopping that 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 number three pick. Uh, I I don't know. Who knows? If, yeah, that's going to be crazy. Who All knows? right, we'll we'll see. going on on ESPN, so folks can check you out, my friend. Uh, we've you know ESPN's got you covered every step of the way. You check out our draft tab uh, under the NFL, I guess, parent site of our of our website. We've got analysis, we got predictions, we got big boards, we got mock drafts. Uh, myself and my colleagues, we're going to react and tell you how each pit fits or fits each team's. Like, I, I, if you want everything in one place, I don't know if there's many better places to go than ESPN on draft night. You know, I'm keeping an iPad up the entire night, both nights, strictly, strictly for the uh for the espn app and for the the draft cast like it, it's truly it's a marvel every year i'm excited to see how it looks this year we seem to outdo ourselves every single season so i'm kicking my feet up man i'm kicking my feet up i'm gonna do some cleaning around here I have a nice calm environment maybe get a candle light some sage a lot of zen here tonight because i don't think there's gonna be a whole lot of action in south florida other than the young men whose lives are changing tonight, like I said before. All right, good stuff as always. Follow him on Twitter at Marcel underscore LJ. And don't forget, folks, for those of you that are dealing right now with some uh, issues because of weather over the last couple of weeks and you're dealing with these insurance companies and they're bringing you down, please call my friends at Welt and Rayom. They're in Hollywood. They service all of South Florida. They've got an office in the Keys. Even one of our listeners up in Orlando came down and hired Welton Rayom. So really, you can do it all with a phone call, 954-966-4646. If you're dealing, sadly, with bankruptcy, uh, condo damage, criminal defense, business owner claims, commercial litigation, personal injury, homeowner property damage like we had, they crushed Progressive and got the money we needed in order to fix our home. They can do the same thing for you. 954 966 4646. Call Welton Realm and tell him that Big O sent you. Marcel, have a great weekend. We will catch up next week, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Five years for Lamar. There you go. Nice job. All right. We'll get the numbers eventually. Thank you, sir. There you go. Marcel Louis Jacques.